I'm Penny Poyser and this is the Nottingham Eco Home. It's a Victorian house that we've completely eco retrofitted. There's a four metre solar thermal panel on the roof and on the side and the rear elevation of the house we have six inches of insulation. We didn't want to change how the front of the house looked on the street so on the front elevation we've actually internally insulated. If you look up at the cornices We've actually restored them. Everybody's familiar with Velux windows. What's different in this case is the depth here. This is actually suspended plasterboard where we've blown in 300 mil depth of blown insulation, which is basically recycled newspaper. On the flat, it's 400 mil, and that completes the thermal envelope of the house. In the areas where we had to put new openings in, we've introduced high spec double glazing, except for this room where these doors are actually triple glazed. One problem though is a cat flap. Well, here we are in my eco-fabulous or eco-bling kitchen. Um, we wanted a kitchen that was really fantastic but which made the lowest use of energy that we possibly could. So starting off with the lighting. There are 12 lights in here but it's LED technology. But when they're all on it only takes a total of 36 watts. When it comes to appliances, our fridge and washing machine are A-rated and triple A-rated. We have a, an oven which is a combination microwave, so that cuts down cooking by two thirds. And we have an induction hob which is 50% more efficient than the conventional one. So that whole pallet really brings the energy use down. But it isn't just that. You've also got to consider what the kitchen is made from. So we've got recycled yogurt pots for the doors. And then behaviourally, I'm really, really careful about how much energy I use when I cook. Now our, our downpipes look fairly normal, uh, except that they're made of copper, but instead of just going into a soak away, it actually is part of our rainwater harvesting system, which supplies us with water for our low flush loos, our washing machine and external tap. The other thing that's slightly different is that we have three heat exchange units. Now when you have um, a house that's prone to damp, which Victorian houses are, it's really, really important to keep the wet areas, so that's kitchens and bathrooms, as free from humidity as possible. So these very clever units literally take the heat out of the air and the moisture. The moisture is deposited outside, but the warm air returns to the room. So you get good levels of humidity, but you don't suffer from heat loss. Here are rainwater harvesting tanks, um, and you saw the downpipes earlier. But maybe more importantly from an energy point of view is that Rainwater has a very low CO2 element to it. We also have a wood burning boiler and it was actually the first of its kind to be installed in the UK and it runs purely and simply off waste timber. It costs us nothing to heat the house, it is hard work but it's a great feeling when the house is warm and you know it's free and it's the result of your own sweat. When we started doing this house nine years ago there was nobody else doing it and um, it was a real leap in the dark. A lot of the time it was guesswork because there just wasn't the information. But it's a living laboratory. It's an experiment in how to do things differently. And um, if we were doing it all over again, and people said, would you do it again? And absolutely, but we would do it better. This house is part of a group of exemplar houses brought together by the Sustainable Energy Academy. This project is part of the Old Home Super Home campaign to reduce carbon emissions from existing houses by 60%.